<laughs> the way we get started is I just ask people if they can give me their name and, and where they're from. Okay, um, my name's Juliet Smith and I'm from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, excellent, excellent. And you know Ryan down there. Uh, Ryan Denham, yes, I do. Ryan's a good friend of mine. Well, that's excellent. Okay, and uh, why don't you tell me a little about yourself? Um, I am a junior at the, the university. Um, uh, for biology, and I want to be a doctor, and hopefully help a lot of people that way. I am also a member of the student, the Students for Sensible Drug Policy, formerly UA Normal chapter, but we changed our name. So, uh, why is it that you wanted to sit for an interview with me today? Well, um, when my father, when my father was dying of colon cancer, uh, he. Uh, the lab, about the last uh, six months or so that he was alive, we, he'd be laying there just completely miserable, you know, in so much pain. He, like, his body was, he had, can't, he was cancer ridden everywhere. The, the doctors, um, when they discovered it, were like, oh, let's do exploratory surgery and cut him from here to his belly button. And um, he said they pretty, it was pretty much an autopsy before he was even dead. Um, but anyways, He'd be laying there, and they would give him morphine, and that would just knock him out, right? And he was so thin, I'd never seen him that thin. He was always a little meatier, kind of like me, just kind of husky, you know, um, healthy. But is if um, he would, you know, kind of just mumble, you know, like, I'm, I'm not quite, you know, he could barely even talk. And um, but as soon as he would light up, it was maybe five minutes. And who could be up, having a conversation with you, eating a bowl of cereal? I mean, it's just ridiculous. If if you can have a prescription for um, morphine, which is so addictive and just pretty much knocks you out, then why can you not have a prescription for this wonderful God-given herb that just makes everything better. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Definitely. So you actually saw the the, the, the oh. marked difference in his life. It made made uh, his cancer treatment and his, his final days bearable. Yeah, definitely, yes. And morphine did, did not. It would, you know, just put him to sleep it, and, and not even take care of his pain completely unless he was sleeping. So what, what do you hope to accomplish by speaking out about this? Um, drug policy reform, eventually. Hopefully, um, you know, um, medical cannabis uh, to start out with in, in all 50 states is, you know, what, what I'm going for. Eventually, you know, I want it to be legal and then feed the world, actually, because I think that cannabis um, is definitely... Um, a good, a good start to ending some, world hunger. It has <laughs> a multiple, multiple benefits, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. Yes, it does. But first and foremost, uh, if it can help people who are chronically and terminally ill, why right. not? Right? Yeah. When we give them all these very hard drugs that are very addictive, and I mean, I've also dealt with my my brother had a horrible hydrocodone addiction. Um, you know, and I think. And I have friends that, you know, have just had their wisdom teeth taken out. One of my friends, he's, uh, and, you know, the doctors will give you this big bottle of hydrocodone. And, you know, he's only 19, and he is an adult, but it's just not a very good way to sort of start out your life. <laughs> Sounds great. I kind of like what you said. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, Pretty much covered it, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. Thank you.